Nick and Nicholas are squaring off in the action horror comedy Renfield. It's violent and bloody, but does the pairing work? Dracula's loyal servant Renfield is a tortured aide to his narcissistic boss. Renfield is forced to procure his master's prey and do his every bidding. But now, after centuries of servitude, Renfield is ready to see if there's a life outside the shadow of the Prince of Darkness. So when the trailer for Renfield came out, it caused quite a stir, especially among Nicolas Cage fans, because we got a glimpse of how unhinged he might become playing the greatest bloodsucker of all. As Dracula, Cage sinks his teeth into the role, and he plays it both straight and hammy. Now, he's channeling some of the classical performances while also putting his own Nicolas Cage effect on the character. And you can tell he's having a blast playing the Count because any overacting that he does fits perfectly within the persona. And surprisingly, he's menacing when he needs to be. Now, I said he plays the character sort of hammy. I don't mean in a comical sense, but at least he's not trying to be outright funny. He's pretty much everything you'd expect out of a Dracula played by Nicolas Cage. Now, Nicholas Holt plays Renfield, Dracula's familiar, and he is outstanding in this. He narrates part of the background for the story, so we get to hear his dry wit. But when he's on screen, he projects this downtrodden and mostly defeated guy who's been in agony because of his extended life of serving. Holt is called upon to do a lot of action in this, and he executes it amazingly and convincingly. Now, I'm sure other reviewers are probably also going to mention this, but there's a point where he has to launch himself across an open space. And when he does it, it's pretty much the exact same stance and body posture that he used when he was Beast in X-Men. Now, all he needed to be was blue and furry, and you'd have that character. But outside of that fun little quirk, Holt is the heart and the star of the story. I love how we get to watch a character transition as he begins to gain some confidence and learns that he may actually be able to function in the world away from Dracula and the overbearing and abusive treatment that he receives. There are also some supporting performances from Aquafina, Ben Schwartz, and Shara Agshrelu. Now, Aquafina plays a cop named Quincy, whose case crosses paths with Holt, and they have good chemistry and timing together, conveying both comedy and care at key moments. Ben Schwartz is exactly what you'd expect. I mean, he's pretty much John Ralphio from Parks and Rec, but with a ton of tattoos and a terrible mouth. He's sarcastic, and while I like him as an actor, only some of his humor and delivery worked for this. Now, the entire premise of the movie is split, and one half of it is incredibly awesome, the other thin and weak. Now, I really like the idea of Renfield trying to get out from under Dracula and then finally gaining some confidence to try that. And that lends itself to all sorts of complications and conflicts. And the dynamic between the two, it's fun to watch. But then we have the Lobo family. And that's where Schwartz and Agdash Lu come into this. Now, they're a crime family who are supposed to be powerful and deadly, but they're also said to be the largest, richest, and even most connected family in the city. Now, we never even see any other crime family, so the need to reference anybody else, it was a bit strange for the story. Now, they have a connection with Aquafina and her family, but it's barely touched upon, and it felt really lazily introduced. Now, I know that the Lobos are the MacGuffin that puts Renfield into Quincy's path, which then causes the rest of the scenarios to play out, but the motivations for the Lobos, they're ill-defined, and they're pretty lackluster. Now, they do provide the impetus for some crazy fight sequences, so I'm good with that. But just know that there really isn't any meat to their part of the story, even though the film tries to convince us that there is. And I want to talk about that action for a minute. I mean, it is crazy violent and incredibly bloody. The fight choreography, it's outstanding. And for the most part, the camera and the edits, they stay with the move so that we're allowed to see the action carried out rather than cut all up to create fake urgency. Now, the special effects and the practical effects, they're a bit cheesy at times, but they work so well in the scheme of the movie. There's a point where some appendages become weapons. And while the visuals are ridiculous, they also made me laugh at just how much fun they made the scene. And that goes for a lot of the violence that we get to see. It's way over the top and it's excessive, but it's also full of energy and excitement. And there's also a fight inside a restaurant. And if you thought John Wick could use just anything as a weapon, wait until you see what Renfield could do. I mean, if you get queasy from watching blood spurt all over the place, there are some moments in the movie that you probably aren't going to enjoy. But for everybody else that's looking forward to some insanity, this delivers. Now, the pacing for this is kind of all over the place. While it's only 93 minutes long, there are portions where the time is very evident and the slowness of the story can be felt. At other points, especially during the action, the scenes just fly by. 
Now, we did need some of the quieter moments for exposition, but it's a bit of a bummer when the talking and the emotive scenes feel like they drag the tempo down. I mentioned a little about some of the comedy, and there are a few sequences that utilize subtle and dry humor extremely well. There's a sequence that's shown in the teaser trailer that involves Renfield going to a support group. And there's a repeated gag in this that made me chuckle. I mean, not so much because of the scenario, but because of how this particular character delivers her lines. She just had the right amount of annoyance and disbelief mixed with acquiescence. Now, as a whole, the movie works and it can be fun. But some of the individual elements, like story depth and character development that's outside of the two leads, they're fairly lacking. The action is exciting and violent with energetic choreography, and when that's combined with the dysfunctional dynamic of Renfield and Dracula, the narrative becomes engaging. Despite the stylized violence and captivating performances from Cage and Holt, the comedy and pace often come in large, uneven bursts, like blood spurting from a neck wound. This is enjoyable while watching, and you will probably leave the theater with a large smile on your face. But I don't think the story creates something that's immortally memorable or even long-lasting, but it is certainly a ton better than a stake through the heart. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and then an absolute ton of bloody violence. I give Renfield three and a half out of five couches. So do you have a favorite vampire movie? Let me know what it is in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.